Welcome back, everyone. Uh, I trust that you all had a, a good break over lunch and that you had the opportunity to go and visit some of the, uh, the virtual exhibits uh, or, or have a chat with some people in the background. Um, so to start with the, uh, the pre-tea break session, we've got uh, some excellent presentations uh, largely carrying on the, the theme of digital that we were running with this morning. Um, our first presenter this afternoon is John Maxfield, Business Development Director from Vitalis. Uh, and John's going to talk to us today, and um, I understand he's got some uh, videos and things to show you, which I'm sure will be great for post the post-lunch entertainment. Uh, John, welcome. Thank you for joining us. You're going to talk to us about challenges and trends in the shipbuilding industry, driving the need for collaborative XR. So looking forward to, uh, to your presentation. Uh, take it away when you're ready. OK, OK, hi. Welcome. My name is John Maxfield. I'm the Business Development Director at Vitalis, and I'm joined here today by my colleague Paul McCall, Senior Solutions Engineer. And we're here to talk to you today about the convergence of challenges uh, and trends within the shipbuilding industry and how this is driving the need for collaborative XR within uh, industries and across the supply chain. We'll also present the Vitalis collaborative XR platform that addresses many of the challenges uh, uh, that we'll talk about today and show how this is already delivering real value with some of our largest customers in the shipbuilding industry. Before we start, I'd like to give you uh, a quick overview of what is possible when collaborative XR is deployed to full advantage in this industry and show you uh, some of the use cases uh, that it can benefit. This is now all possible with our latest XR collaborative platform. But now let us take a step back and look at what is driving and accelerating the introduction of this technology. A recent study by Gartner identified the top trends that concern manufacturers. The topic that had the highest level of focus among senior executives was the transformation uh, to digital experience for products and processes, both for the enterprises and for their customers. This is reflected in the concerns of many of the industry. The typical questions that manufacturers uh, wake at night, uh, keep, keep manufacturers awake at night include, how do I get my product to market faster and accelerate the distributed hybrid workforce? How can I fully engage with my supply chain to deliver agile processes? How can I leverage industry 4.0 technologies to take full advantage of them, such as digital twins and IoT networks? And how can I keep my distributed workforce engaged and keep their skill sets up to date? And I also need to know how I can understand and realize the benefits of emerging technologies such as the metaverse so I don't fall behind. These are all real questions that worry people in the industry today. In addition to these concerns, modern enterprises are also all on a journey of digital transformation. This is requiring them to adapt to uh, increasing demands from customers and disruptive competitors and also increasing product, data and supply chain complexity, which can be a real challenge. On top of this, there is no well-defined endpoint for the digital transformation journey. It's a continuous process involving uh, the building out of capabilities and continuous evolution of processes. The mission, however, is to optimise how the business operates 
uh, from the top to the bottom and to change the mindset of people in the value chain from traditional over the wall sequential processes to more simultaneous collaborative and agile ways of working. <clears throat> Taken together, these challenges can present an overwhelming convergence of, of uh, both challenges, technology trends and market dynamics, and it can be difficult to navigate. We've mentioned a few of these already in the presentation, but making the right choices in terms of if, when and how to address the challenges, adopt the different technologies and adapt to the market dynamics. Making these right choices will affect the speed and success of that digital transformation process within the enterprise and ultimately the success of the enterprise within uh, the market. However, if we analyze the intersections between these areas, we can start to identify some of the common themes, and this will help us to distill and simplify some of the problems. If we look first at the industrial challenges, um, we can see that there are a number of key technologies on the, on the right that can help us to address the challenges on the left. And so we find that technology-driven digital transformation becomes a key part of any of these processes. Similarly, when we consider the market dynamics compared to the technical challenges, we find that actually a common theme here is that adopting agile processes and seamless collaboration are common themes and allow us to address many of these areas. New technology trends also allow us to address the market dynamics through the increased adoption of cloud and edge technologies. Uh, to support the distributed hybrid workforces and value chains that are common these days, especially with the pandemic pushing people to work from home. These common overlapping themes can be addressed using a combination of digital transformation steps, but the need, but the, all of this needs to be underpinned with readily accessible, open, data agnostic, real time collaboration platforms that are secure and trusted. And this is what is now driving the acceleration of platforms such as the Vitalis XR Collaborative cloud-based platform. The platform that we have uh, supports digital transformation of enterprises who are trying to navigate these changes. It supports on-demand instant collaboration involving large 3D models and digital twins, any, available anytime, anywhere across a multitude of devices from smartphones to tablets to immersive devices like HMDs in an effortless and secure platform accessible from anywhere across the value chain. This supports many of the core manufacturing activities across the whole development process from design reviews to training, maintenance operations and decommissioning. If we look at this in the context of the actual product development process, we can see um, that this allows the organisations to address many of the challenges that we highlighted earlier. By bringing all of the complex product data and process from a huge variety of sources across the enterprise's supply chain into one common place, which we call the virtual bomb or virtual bill of materials. This effectively creates a metaverse, a local metaverse of design models, virtual prototypes, digital twins, and a whole range of virtual assets for that are automatically kept live and up to date, but also instantly accessible from anywhere in the extended organization to support design reviews, manufacturing planning, uh, standard operating procedures, operations, maintenance, and so forth. By deploying the platform, and this platform specifically, our partners and our customers have reported many real and quantifiable benefits. If we take, for example, design reviews, we've seen products, uh, projects completed in 45% less time, with 40% less cost and 30% decrease in overall development time. The increased confidence in the design itself through the use of virtual reviews of digital twins remotely, collaboratively, <clears throat> has also meant that a significant percentage of design, um, in this case 67% from one of our customers reported, could be signed off without the need for any physical models or uh, uh, physically getting together to sign them off. This is a significant benefit when working on very large projects, especially shipbuilding projects, which can, can take many, many years. For training, our partners have found some significant advantages to doing this through an XR collaborative platform. They found that trainees have significantly improved retention, have acquired the knowledge of complex processes up to 40% faster, and this has led to significantly reduced training time and cost, in this case, 40%, 30% of real numbers given to us by our, our, our customers. 
But similarly, if we look at digital twins and the sharing of digital twins of products and processes for manufacturing planning, um, this has also proven to reduce reported issues on the shop floor by up to 80%, reducing the time needed to design and adapt new work cells by nearly a quarter, and leading to 50% uh, faster time to market and new products uh, being introduced, and 70%, which is a significant reduction in injuries on the shop floor as well through better, more advanced virtual planning. So the Vitalis Collaborative Excel platform has incorporated much of the learning and knowledge and expertise that we as a company have acquired over 30 years as global leaders and pioneers in the use of advanced visualization in engineering across many different sectors as well, and not just engineering, and markets. And this includes over 20 years of deploying successful AR, VR and XR solutions in the shipbuilding industry, with many of our biggest clients, including uh, Subsea 7, C-SPAN, BAE Systems and the Royal Navy. We're now going to hand over to Paul McCall, um, who will actually present some real examples from some of our customers, um, some of the ones listed here, for example, uh, and talk about the real benefits that they've seen. OK, uh, so thank you, John. Let's have a look then at an example of just how how well proven visualization technology is. Uh, here in this picture, we were looking at the submarines, uh, a company that started with VR almost 25 years ago. And in that time, they've gained really significant experience in leveraging advanced visualization. Um, in the design, uh, they've used it in the design and manufacturing phases of, of all of their marine delivery. Through really careful optimization of um, the handling of their data and optimization of the size uh, of their data, um, and with automated processing that we've been able to provide them, um, we can ensure that all of the data is current all of the time. And that data is always available and always visible. And we make it available in the right place at the right time. All of this has really significant impact on the way in which they operate. And in what way, you might ask? Well, the costly physical prototypes have been removed. When you design something big and complex uh, like a submarine, it takes uh, sometimes years to build them. They were building a physical prototype at the beginning of the process, which cost them a huge amount of money, say 10 million pounds or more. But as soon as they'd built it, it was effectively redundant because as technology changes, that model becomes redundant. So even as they're building the submarine section by section, technology is changing and they're updating the design to take advantage of those new technologies. And it's always really important that we make um, best advantage of those and have that data available to the people that are actually doing the work on the factory floor. So data was provided where it was needed, which was on the factory floor. In the image on the right hand side of this slide, you can see the submarine um, tube, the main body of the submarine, and slightly above it is a cabin. Well, in this cabin is a full VR suite. Data was prepared, um, data was managed from the CAD system and made available every day within that CAD VR suite. Now the engineers themselves, so that's the engineers that, that do the fitting and the pipe laying and the cable laying and the welding, those engineers themselves led the VR reviews that were taking place in those cabins. And because it's 3D, Everybody understands a 3D model. Everybody understands a physical prototype and effectively a visual model, a three dimensional visual model becomes that prototype. It gives all of the trades from the designers to the CAD team to the guys on the shop floor one common visual language. And this saves a huge amount of, amount of time. And the time is often saved from the engineers that are turning up for their shifts in the morning, going from their, uh, their location on the factory floor up to the CAD print room and pulling new drawings for every shift. This means that they were saving 15 minutes per man per day. And these engineer led reviews meant that they saved that time and money and that they got a payback within one month. So this is multiple VR suites, suites the implementation of new software and new processes, yet payback was in a month. So we can see, because it's been around for 25 years in this factory, that this technology is proven, it's stable, and it's value adding and it solves a number of problems. So how is this developed? Well, in another division of BAE, 
they were going through a review process. They were reviewing their investment in advanced visualization technologies for both hardware and software. And this was part of a, of a major digital transformation program. They were drawing on the inspiration from automotive manufacturers who operate at much shorter design cycles. And they commissioned a sort of a three month VR trial uh, for the design and review and planning process. And it was really um, an instant success. And they can, as a result, they commissioned this huge network of large scale VR systems. So they have a 24 large scale VR systems, many of them large three dimensional projected walls. And these are spread right across the network and they were made using our software fully collaborative. This um, provided a really CAD aware solution. So the software was CAD aware, the visualization tools were CAD aware, and it made the teams, it gave them that common visual language right across the business. And the confidence they gained in getting it right first time added even more value and another rapid return on investment. So 100% return on investment in less than 12 months. So this is now firmly embedded um, in the company processes. It's firmly embedded in their day to day uh, cycles within the business and it's adding value. So why don't we stop here and, and take some time to review a VR model in real time? So one that's um, that's running on my laptop right here, right now. Let's take a look at that. OK, so here we have a wind turbine. This wind tur turbine is complete in, in every sense. We fly into it, we can see every nut, bolt and washer. And these are fully accessible to the user. So we can interact with them. Now I remind you, I'm doing this live on my laptop right now. And we can see all those nuts and bolts. And in fact, they are even all represented in the tree structure, just like every engineer would expect. So part is highlighted, it has its original part name and it sits within a tree structure that the engineer will fully recognize. Now, in, uh, once the design for any individual part is completed and approved, we can put all those together into one place and view the assembly as a whole. So here we have the full wind turbine. We can step inside and see all the components within there put together as they would be. And we can mix many types of data in this system. And it doesn't matter where they come from, whether it's NX or Creo or whether it's SolarWorks, pretty much any CAD data can go in here and we can build these really complex assemblies and check them out part at a time. We can check their fit and the accessibility for installation or the accessibility for maintenance. We could work in this space with real tools, for example. We can track in a virtual environment, we can track real tools, model those in, in the VR environment and see how they fit and check for collisions throughout the scene. This is really where all of your data comes alive. And engineers and marketers and um, customers alike can uh, use the same visual, uh, visual language to review a product as a group. Um, what's more, you can add real time data onto it. So these orbs that we're seeing here actually connect to real time data and we can feed back information onto the CAD system. So you could actually see additional um, benefits being added if you are monitoring a product in the form of a digital twin, perhaps. So once the designs are valid validated, what do we do? Well, we've got to build it. And we've got a plan to build it. So let's go down into the factory. So if we drop down into the factory, here we are in our boardroom uh, making some design decisions. You could plan the assembly process using a discrete event simulation package. So here we've got um, a little video running. Uh, we could actually run this in real time, but what we've got is a um, discrete event simulation model of the factory. And that will run, um, you could run that on the factory floor to plan what you're doing. Uh, plan the optimize and optimize the layout of that factory. It's see in this model, there's a little discrete event simulation uh, model running. That's great if you've got a model of your factory, a CAD model. Um, model like like this, perhaps. So here's our factory floor and we've got a CAD model of it. 
But what happens if we don't have a CAD model of that? So if we're reusing a, um, a legacy factory, for example, well, we could look at that factory floor and we could scan it with a laser system to develop a point cloud. Here we can see the factory being scanned with lasers and we've developed a high resolution point cloud of the model. Now we can walk in here and actually see how that point cloud um, lays out in the factory. And then we could lay out our factory within that point cloud. So here we've actually mixed um, a point cloud with a CAD model. And that can be done very, very accurately. So let's go back into the boardroom. Excuse me. OK, so what's the next stage to this? Well, we've designed and laid out our factory. Let's go and see this from a human perspective. OK, so we can take that discrete event simulation package, optimize the design and then build a model of it and put that in our factory. And we can use this to check lines of sight, for example. So as I said, from a human perspective, I could go and put myself in this user's um, position, see what he can see. If, for example, um, the, uh, the factory is working and you see these uh, parts moving down the factory line and you know that a model, um, a machine has failed, we can actually go and check out which machine has failed and we can check out um, what impact that will have further down the line. Finally, we can move through and have a look at perhaps using this data further down. We build on the digital thread that we've got. So here we've got the factory and here we've got another assembly area and a quality test area. So in this example, we're testing the thickness of the coating on the turbine blades. Now, instead of seeing data in a dry um, way or in a complex way, so for example, in charts or reports that might be difficult to interpret, and different, difficult to make sense of, we can bring that data into a physical um, environment and see that laid out as if you would if you were in the real factory. So here we can see that the measurement and uh, are within tolerance. The thickness of the coating is within tolerance at each of these different places. But there's a problem here. So not only can we see that it has been a problem, we can see where that problem is occurring and we can see it instantly. So what we're saying is this allows complex data to be very, very easily reviewed and easily checked out. And finally, we could even once we've worked everything out, we can plan how we're assembling something. So we can plan putting this on the factory floor, how people will interact with it, how trolleys are parts, how forklifts can move around, and how an engineer will use his tools to actually assemble a product. So you can see we've used the same CAD data from the very first design review stages all the way through to its finished manufacturing, and in fact, through, its, through to its digital twin. This now concludes our presentation today. I hope you found it interesting and we're now able to take some questions, um, anything you may have for us now, um, or if you prefer to speak to us one to one, we'll be available on our uh, Vitalis exhibition channel. Uh, you can also contact us through our website uh, and, all of, and also follow us on LinkedIn uh, and also join some of our own webinars, so feel free to do that. I'll now open the floor up to some questions. Thank you. John, thank you so much. Uh, great presentation from you and Paul there. Uh, particularly uh, liked and enjoyed the use of the visuals and the use cases. I think it really brought home uh, the, the, the real utility and value in what you, you guys are delivering. Uh, we don't have anything in the Q&A, so I, I shall do, uh, do a Sarah and abuse my um, uh, chair's privilege, if I no may. No problem. I, I, was really, um, I really liked the, the build here of starting at the beginning, thinking, thinking about the technology trends, the market dynamics and the industry challenges, I think. Um, it's really good and healthy to see <coughs> those things being considered as part of this process because, of course, it's not uh, the risk with something as as brilliant to, as this is that you can get very carried away with how it looks and all of the things it can do and almost Absolutely. forget what, what the utility of it is. And I think the fact that this has clearly got such a huge amount of utility is, is very obvious and will be to everybody uh, who's who's listened to the presentation today. Um, I guess uh, the, the last sort of section of the presentation talking about the digital thread and how you put an awful lot of complex data in front of people on the front line, in, in the factory, in the boardroom, making decisions, you know, dynamically whilst they're sitting with the shipyard right behind, by, beside them. I was really taken with that and how you, how you can bring agility to important decision making 
and retain assurance that you're making the right decision. I think that's, if you think about, you know, that's the golden thread, isn't it? That's what everybody wants. They need, yeah. they want a need to be able to make decisions at speed, but to do it with confidence uh, so that they can take cost and risk out, make decisions as early as they can in the life cycle. Um, and, and actually to your, your point at the beginning, deliver value, uh, profitability across the whole of the life cycle and, and yeah. its supply chains. I think that's absolutely right. I, where I was left with was love the use cases. What next? You know, what, what, what else do you think you can you can do with this and how quickly do you think you can progress? Yeah. OK, so uh, what's the future? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we're constantly be being presented with challenges in the industry. I mean, the pan the recent <laughs> pandemic is an obvious example of that, where, where we're, we're constantly firefighting to try and keep uh, the processes optimal, to keep them efficient while dealing with the real world. Um, and right now, for example, you know, the whole uh, engineering manufacturing industry is dealing with supply chain disruption. Um, and, you know, the issues where, you know, we, we, we're having to work with, in hybrid workforces and this is in becoming increasingly uh, more of a challenge as uh, as things develop. Um, hopefully these will, will die off in future. But in terms of the technology trends, I think we are, I think, I think the, the phrase that I've heard commonly is new normal. Um, and I think we're having to adapt to a world of new normal. Um, we've seen a couple of presentations today and people mentioning things like the metaverse. And I, I, I often see engineers rolling their eyes when they hear that phrase sometimes. Um, but it is a, a challenge and, and trying to uh, bring people into this world where it's it's ultimately a fully connected world. We've seen several presentations today where people are talking about bringing together data in one place, accessing data live from ships. And one of the challenges we're looking at right now is how um, we can share this kind of rich content, the XR content, not just over standard networks where we know we've got high bandwidth, but for example, over satellite networks down to ships that are actually operating and, and uh, uh, we have customers who are, you know, uh, working, for example, on undersea pipelines who are planning maintenance operations while on the way to the, the site on the ship. And the only communication you can have to the ship is through the satellite network where you've got limited bandwidth. So these are challenges. How do we share this kind of rich content out to those, those areas so they can, they can access, for example, the digital twin on a cloud from anywhere in the world? And this is a real challenge right now for distributed workforces and also for distributed um, uh, organizations. Supply chains are becoming much more challenging and, and have been disrupted, but we also find that supply chains have to be more agile. So how do we keep agility while also dealing with the disruption? And this is a challenge. So this is why at the beginning, we, we kind of looked at all these trends and some of these great technologies that are coming along, but the challenges that we're facing and, and a lot of companies just aren't there yet. So we uh, find that a lot of the challenges we have are not technology based because the technology is there. It's more the digital transformation and how do we bring customers? I, I mean, I, in the shipbuilding industry, there's a lot of traditional processes, a lot of sequential over the wall type process, which we need to get people working in a more agile and parallel way. And so it's, it's, it's our expertise in the technology and how that then applies to each individual a scenario that, that really is where the challenge lies going forward. The technology will continue to move at a pace and yeah. will continue to develop, but it's how we map that and make real good use of it and in the challenges that we all face. So yeah, that, that for me is where, you know, we need to get better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. John, thank you so much right, and uh, in, enjoy the rest of the, uh, the, the conference and, and I hope the exhibition part of it is going well for you too. Thank you for your time <laughs> today. Thank much you. Appreciated. Yeah. Great. Um, thank you very much. Okay. So uh, for those who are staying with us, uh, I'm going to end this session now and move on to Darren Nice from BAE Systems. So I will sign us out and then see you on the other side. Thanks again, John. Cheers. Okay. Thank you.